I am Dr. R.J. Golden Ranjit Nimal, Associate Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research, Chennai. I am going to discuss about the topic friction in theory of machines. So, friction. What is meant by friction? Friction. So, fr these are all the topics which we are going to cover uh, in this video. What is meant by friction? So, frictional or uh, frictional force is always that is a force that uh, acts in an opposite direction to the moment. So, a frictional force is always acting in the uh, direction opposite to the direction of motion. So, smoothness of the surface is uh, only a relative term. Even uh, most uh, accurately planned surface will not be free from rigidness and depressions, which may be may not be visible to the naked eyes, but they become apparent on microscopical examination. When one surface has contact with another surface, these rigid, uh, rigids and the depressions interlock and the relative motion of one surface more, more over the other is restricted. So the, the, uh, this restrictive force is called as a uh, frictional force or force of friction. So um, generally, uh, friction is said to be uh, the uh, necessary evil uh, in engineering application, uh, friction is uh, both desirable and undesirable. So friction is very, very important uh, in our day-to-day uh, -day life. If you want to walk, then uh, friction is very important, right? So there are um, appliances and devices known as the uh, frictional uh, devices such as ropes, bells, clutches, uh, brakes, or nuts and bolts, right? So many examples we can uh, say for uh, this uh, friction, right? So in uh, it causes the loss of energy and hence reduced mechanical efficiency. So uh, th these are all the uh, types of friction. Before uh, going to the types of friction, uh, we should know what are the types of surfaces, right? So there are three possible state of surfaces. One is the dry surface. Second one is the greasy or uh, partially lubricated surface. Third one is the completely lubricated or uh, film lubricated surface. So these are all the important types of surfaces. Then come to the uh, friction types. First, uh, it is mainly um, depends on these uh, types. I mean, uh, uh, dry friction or Coulomb friction, we can uh, say it as. In uh, dry friction, it is classified into two types. One is the sliding friction and uh, rolling friction. Then uh, second one is the uh, skin or greasy friction. Third one is the film friction, right? So these are all the types of uh, frictions. So what is it by dry friction or uh, Coulomb friction, right? So uh, this friction that exists between two unlubricated surfaces is known as the uh, solid friction or dry friction, right? So there is uh, much resistance to the relative motion between the surface. So it is uh, gla the classification or uh, solid uh, sliding friction or sliding friction. So this solid uh, sliding friction is otherwise called as solid friction, right? So this friction that exists when one surface slides over another surface is known as sliding friction or solid friction, right? So rolling friction, what is this rolling friction? Rolling friction yeah, that exists when one surface rolls over another surface is called the rolling friction. So this uh, rolling friction is always less than the sliding friction for uh, 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 illustration, for example, uh, a given load can be easily shifted on a cart than uh, dragging or sliding it on the ground. You can uh, uh, see it uh, here, right? Yeah. So, uh, so while walking, right, we have uh, this shape of uh, 
uh, friction we are getting, right? So see, uh, then compare, uh, come to the second type that is the skin or greasy friction, right? So what is it by greasy friction? So when two surfaces are uh, in contact have minute thin layer of lubricant between them, then it is called as a skin or greasy friction. So in this type of friction, a thin layer of lubricant uh, forms a bond between the two uh, rubbing friction. So the lubricant is uh, absorbed by on the surface and forms a thin layer. This thin layer of the lubricant results in the less friction between them, right? So uh, skin friction is uh, uh, termed as boundary friction. It is otherwise called as boundary friction. Then come to the last one, that is the Flim friction. Flim friction um, is uh, otherwise called as fluid friction or viscous friction, right? So these are all the other terms. And uh, uh, when the two surfaces are in contact or completely uh, separated by a lubricant, then the friction will occur due to the uh, resistance of motion between the lubricant and the surfaces in contact with it. This is known as the Flame friction or viscous friction. So this is the uh, this is known as uh, and this friction is greatly reduced and uh, uh, it is more perfect uh, and it is called as a perfect friction and fluid friction. Right? This friction may be uh, further classified into static friction and dynamic friction. So static friction, you know uh, very well, it is a friction uh, by a body when at rest. Static means rest. Then dynamic friction means it is a friction experienced by a body when it is in motion. So these are all the uh, types of uh, friction. And come to the laws of uh, frictions. Laws of frictions, we have uh, laws of uh, solid friction, laws of uh, fluid frictions, uh, etc. So uh, laws of uh, uh, solid friction or dry friction uh, is uh, having some... Uh, uh, points that is uh, the solid friction uh, is directly I mean frictional force is directly proportional to the normal uh, reaction between the forces right and uh, the frictional force opposes the motion then our its tendency to motion then the frictional force uh, depends upon the nature of the surface in contact so these are all the uh, laws of uh, solid friction come to the uh, laws of uh, fluid friction then the, the frictional forces almost uh, depends on the load it is depends uh, dependent of the substances of the bearing surfaces then uh, frictional forces different from for uh, different uh, lubricants so these are all uh, the importance of the laws of friction uh, and uh, next, uh, we can uh, uh, have an important uh, thing that is the limiting friction. What is the limiting friction? See, the maximum value of the frictional force uh, which comes into uh, play when a body just tends to move is called as a limiting friction or uh, limiting force of friction. So, and the coefficient of friction means it is defined as the ratio of uh, limiting friction uh, to the normal reaction, no, normal uh, reaction. Uh, so, that is called as a no, uh, between the two bodies. So, that is called as a coefficient of friction. So, it is denoted by mu, the letter mu, right? So, uh, while uh, um, you, you uh, we are solving the problem, this uh, symbol mu is... Uh, I mean, uh, uh, coefficient of friction is more important. Then come to the advantages of uh, these uh, um, friction, right? So first thing is uh, friction enables us to walk without slipping. So friction is very important. So because of uh, the friction, uh, friction between the sole of the shoe and the ground uh, prevents us from slipping. While walking, uh, we push the ground uh, backwards and the uh, force of friction uh, acts in the opposite direction. So second, uh, so this is the thing. And the point is uh, friction helps us to walk. Yeah, absolutely, right? So friction, uh, walking on slippery 
ground is difficult so uh, in our home uh, granite uh, and uh, um, uh, tile flooring is more slippery right we feel like that if uh, some water uh, is on the floor we may get slipped down right so we should uh, so there is the uh, less friction right and uh, uh, friction enables the car to uh, move on the road without right uh, without skidding right yeah uh, so this is the third point and uh, so this is a thing so if uh, there is no friction then it is uh, difficult to drive right and um, friction enables a car move uh, on the road uh, without skidding right so this is because of the water present on road uh, reduces the friction so or else uh, it becomes sometimes uh, difficult to drive and to control the car on weight roads right so while in the rainy season uh, we are struggling a lot right and uh, friction enables us to write and uh, draw on paper so it is because of uh, uh, the friction between the tip so a tip of the pen or pencil and the paper then carbon particles from the pencil lead um, are absorbed from it due to the friction which appears as black mark on the uh, paper we can uh, uh, see in our uh, day to day life we are uh, writing the notes writing etc etc we can feel that right? then the friction enables us to uh, pick up and hold things in our hands right so uh, tumblers uh, we can uh, have uh, in uh, in the hands because of friction between the tumbler and the hands right and we can pick up the book lying on the table or desk by our hands. so these are all the examples then uh, uh, so friction enables us to light a match matchstick right so friction also produces a heat right you know it is a practical example so it comes for the disadvantage of this uh, friction uh, wears away the uh, sole of our uh, shoes, right? Due to uh, which uh, shoes get damages, uh, then uh, uh, becomes until unfit to wear. Then uh, the example. So similarly, same example in bicycles of tires, right? If uh, there is no grip, then it may damage easily, right? Yeah. So the friction wears out of brake pads of uh, vehicles gradually. Uh, brake pads is uh, made up of rubber, and it may uh, gradually reduces its, uh, um, I mean, uh, thickness, and uh, it it may damage easily, right? Then friction wears out uh, steps of staircases in building and foot over bridges. So in railway stations. Uh, uh, officers, old building, we have a lot of uh, uh, things like this, right? Nowadays, uh, most of the places uh, they are uh, using uh, lift escalators, etc., right? So, no one uh, is using these type of uh, steps uh, now. We are uh, using a uh, lift, we are using escalators, right? Uh, etc., nowadays, right? So friction shows uh, slows down the motion, right? So friction reduces the motion of uh, uh, moving parts of a machine. In fact, all the moving things such as the cars, buses, planes, uh, boats, ships, etc., are slowed down by friction. So this is the come for the clutches. What is the clutch? So clutch is a transmission device of an automobile which is used to engage or disengage the power from the engine to the rest of the system to the rest of the system so this is called as a clutch so clutch located in between the engine and the transmission system so uh, when the clutch is engaged to the engine uh, power is transmitted to the wheels if it is engaged the power is not transmitted to the uh, rest of the system even though engine is running and uh, hence the vehicle stops so therefore uh, for uh, coupling the engine 
uh, smoothly to the power transmission during the starting from uh, rest and uh, gear shifting uh, clutch is used, right? So come to the functions of clutch. What are the functions of clutch? So it supplies uh, uh, the power to the transmission system. It stops the vehicle by disconnecting the engine from the uh, transmission system. Then uh, it is used to change the gears and idling the engine. So this is a thing. Um, come to the classification of clutches. So come to the classification of the clutches means, uh, um, so it is classified into uh, three types, mainly um, on us, uh, the uh, disc clutch, this is the friction clutches, right? We have uh, so many clutches are there, uh, mechanical, pneumatic, hydraulic, etc. And uh, in mechanical clutch, we have the friction clutch, right? So in this friction clutch, we have three types. One is the uh, disc uh, or a plate clutch, then um, cone clutch, clutches and uh, centrifugal clutches, right? So in uh, disc or plate clutch, it is again classified into two types. One is the single plate clutch and the multi-plate clutch. So you know what is in the... Uh, single plate clutch. I just recall what is made. This is a uh, clutch plate actually. Flywheel. This is the clutch housing, clutch plate, right? So pressure plate is there. So this is the thing. And uh, this is a uh, single plate clutch. So you know what is in the single plate clutch. So this type of clutch is mostly used in uh, motor vehicles, right? And uh, it is used, uh, it consists of one clutch plate, uh, clutch shaft. Uh, clutch spring, pressure plate, then friction lining and bearing, etc. Right. So this uh, flywheel is uh, mounted on the engine crankshaft and rotates with it. So the pressure plate is bolted to the flywheel uh, through clutch uh, springs. The friction lining uh, are both uh, are on both sides of the friction plate. Right. So what are, how it operates, right? So when the uh, clutch is engaged, the uh, clutch plate is gripped between the uh, flywheel and the pressure plate. So due to the friction, um, the clutch plate and the shaft revolves. Uh, when the clutch uh, pedal is pressed, the uh, pressure plate moves uh, back against the uh, force of the spring and the clutch plate becomes uh, free between the flywheel and the pressure plate. So thus, uh, the friction flywheel remains rotating as long as the engine is rotating, running, and uh, uh, the clutch shaft speed reduces slowly and finally it stops rotating. So this is called as a uh, single plate clutch. Then uh, come to the multi-plate clutches. So in uh, this clutch, we have uh, two theories or the two assumptions. One is the uniform pressure theory and uniform wear theory. So while solving the problems, we have uh, this. Uh, uh, while solving the problem, we have uh, these type of uh, theories. We right. Then come to the multi-plate clutch. So multi-plate clutch consists of more than uh, one uh, clutch plates, right? So it is used when large amount of torque is to be transmitted, right? So in uh, uh, in the multi-plate clutch, the, uh, the number of frictional linings and metal plates are increased, which uh, increases the capacity of the clutches to uh, transmit. The clutch plate, uh, the multi-plate clutch works in the same way as the uh, single plate clutch by op operating the clutch pedal, right? So it is mainly uh, used uh, in uh, motor cars, uh, machine tools. Etc. So these are all the um, things. So this is a um, part of an, I mean, parts of an multi-plate clutch. Then the next one is a, a cone clutch. What is a big cone clutch? Cone clutch. So the cone clutch, uh, the contact surface of are in the shape of cones. So the two cones A and B are uh, uh, A and B are in contact with the 
uh, uh, when the clutch is engaged, right? The contact is complete and tight with the help of springs. So thus, the torque is transmitted during the engagement of clutch through uh, friction cones from driving shaft to driven shaft. So for a disengaging the clutch, the cone B is pulled back uh, by means of a lever system uh, compressing the uh, springs, right? So there are there is only one pair of uh, friction surface in these uh, friction, uh, I mean cone clutch. So normally the slope angle alpha is vary from 8 degree to 15 degree normally, right? So this is the uh, importance of this uh, cone clutch. Come to the centrifugal clutch. Centrifugal clutch. What is it, the meant by centrifugal uh, clutch? So this is a centrifugal clutch. So centrifugal clutch is being increased by uh, or used in automobiles and machines. Obviously, it is working on the principle of uh, centrifugal force, right? So you know what is in by centrifugal force. That uh, driving uh, shaft carries the spider shoes and the springs while uh, uh, the driven shaft is connected to the uh, pulley. So uh, this is called as an uh, centrifugal clutch. So it, it has the shoes, right? Uh, so the shoes are mounted radially and uh, springs uh, keep them always from inner rim of the pulley. Shoes has uh, some mass, right? Uh, as the speed of the driving shaft increases or raises the uh, centrifugal force of uh, shoes, increases the cast, increases, causing them to uh, move radially outwards within the guides provided. Right? When the uh, centrifugal force is uh, less than the spring force, brake lining uh, connect, uh, cannot uh, move any contact with the Fully rim, but uh, when the surf uh, centrifugal force is equal to the spring force, then the shoe is just floating, right? When the centrifugal force just exceeds the spring force, the shoe moves uh, outwards and comes into contact with the driven member and presses against it to the uh, transmitting of that charge, right? So this is called as a centrifugal. Come to the next uh, uh, important topic is belt and rope drives, right? So whenever the power is transmitted from one shaft to another, a belt or rope drive is frequently used. So in, uh, you can uh, see that in uh, old uh, rice mills, right? Uh, floor mills or rice mills, we can see uh, this. Nowadays, the machines are very compact, right? So the pulleys are... Uh, uh, mounted on the shaft and the continuous belt or rope is passed over them. So in uh, uh, rope or uh, rope is a circular belt, right? Rope or uh, belt is uh, uh, the power is transmitted due to the friction between them and the pulleys, right? So um, the amount of uh, the smaller distance means we can go for gears. Otherwise, we can use this type of belt up. Right. So the amount of power transmitted uh, depends upon the um, several factors such as velocity, tension, mass, right, etc. Come to the type of belt, types of belt or classification of belt. So the drives are classified into two types. One is the uh, flexible drives and direct drives. So uh, flexible drive, we have belt drive. Uh, rope drive and chain drive. So direct drives, we have cam drive and gear drives. So this belt drive uh, is classified into flat belt, V belt, and circular belt. Circular belt is called as an, what is that? Circular belt is called as an rope, right? See, and uh, uh, this belt uh, drive uh, is commonly used in the transmission of power when the exact velocity ratio is not required, right? So it transmits the power from one uh, pulley to the another pulley. So this is a, these are all the images. So these are the belt materials which we are using, 
right? So welch material, so plaid welch means we can have leather, canvas, cotton, and uh, rubber. And we belt, we have uh, rubberized fabric and rubber, and then uh, a rope, uh, cotton, hemp, and manila, right? Then uh, types of belt. You know what is the flat belt? Flat belt means uh, it is a circular in cross-section, sorry, rectangular in cross-section. Then it is uh, transmitting uh, the power, medium uh, amount of power. Then examples, uh, factories, workshops, uh, then floor mills, etc. Then come for the V-belt. V-belt are trapezoidal in cross-section. Then V-belt is more compact, quite shock absorbing and positive drive. Then uh, it, uh, it is used in wet grinders, uh, lathe factories, etc. Right? Then come to the circular belt or rope. So it is circular in cross-section. It is used in workshops and factories. Right? So these are all the things and it is uh, classified into uh, two types, open belt drive and cross belt drive. What is going to be open belt drive? The open belt drive is, uh, um, is, used, uh, is used with the shaft arranged parallel and uh, rotating in the same direction. So this is the uh, open belt drive. Right. So then uh, cross, what is the cross belt drive? Cross belt drive means the uh, power is transmitted in the opposite direction. Right. So then uh, the next one is the uh, law of belting. Very important thing. Uh, the law of belting states that the center lines of the belt as it approaches the pulley uh, must lie in the plane perpendicular to the axis of the pulley and it should be uh, lie. Uh, Pulley, otherwise the belt will run off the pulley. Then uh, we can uh, move to the uh, next topic that is uh, brakes. What is the brakes? Brakes is very important uh, uh, in automobiles, right? So ba basically, brake is a, a mechanical device by uh, means of which motion of a, a body is retarded for slow down or to bring it to rest by applying some artificial frictional force, right? Or frictional resistance. So in this process of regulation, regulating the motion, the brake absorbs either kinetic energy of the moving member or potential energy given up by objects being lowered by hoist or uh, um, elevators, etc. So the capacity of any brake depends upon the unit pressure between the braking surface and the coefficient of friction between them, uh, the velocity of a brake drum, uh, heat dissipation uh, capacity of the brake, etc. So this is the this is called as the uh, important things of brakes, right? And uh, what is a dynamometer? So a dynamometer is a uh, brake incorporating a device to measure uh, the frictional force resistance applied. So this is used for measuring the driving force or uh, torque uh, transmitted and hence the power uh, developed by the machine. So it may be uh, work on the principle of absorption or transmission. So these are all the important uh, things uh, of the brakes. Then um, you know what is the difference between the clutch and the brake? So clutch is normally, uh, so the basic difference is that uh, uh, clutch connects uh, two moving members of the machine, whereas a uh, brake connects a moving member uh, to the um, trans stationary member. So this is called uh, this is called the uh, difference. Uh, sorry, this is the difference between the clutch and the brake. Then come to the types of uh, brakes. What are the types of brakes? So it is of classified into four or five types. One is the block or shoe brake, band brake, and uh, third one is the band and block brake. Then fourth one is the internal uh, expanding shoe brake, and the last one is the vacuum brake. So these are the. Uh, before that, we have some applications for uh, brakes. So this is uh, very much familiar. 
then these are all the classifications. So uh, initially it is classified into mechanical, electrical and uh, hydraulic. Then from that it is classified into, um, uh, into block brake, then a band brake and uh, internal or external expanding shoe brakes. So the important thinkers uh, internal and uh, internal expanding breaker. So in what is in the internal expanding brake? Internal expanding brake means internal uh, expanding brake consists of two shoes. One is the outer uh, surface of the shoes or connected, covered uh, with frictional material. Each shoe is pivoted at one end about the uh, fixed uh, fulcrum and the other end rest against the cam. So when the cam is operated, the shoe are pushed outwards against the uh, brake drum. So the friction between the shoes and the drum produces the braking drum, braking torque. So you know what is it by torque, right? So this type of brake is commonly used in motors, motor uh, cars and light trucks. And uh, come to the, this is called the internal expanding shoe brake, this is the image right and um, the disc brake is also there now normally now, now all the automobiles uh, are uh, coming in disc brakes right so in olden days only we depends upon the uh, drum brake so this is called as a disc brake and before that um, another uh, types of a block uh, shoe brake then uh, band brake etc is also there so uh, axial brakes are there Right. So uh, in uh, these type of brakes also, we can use it in the automobiles. Then come to the last part of the uh, this uh, session, that is uh, friction in uh, screw and nut. So you know what is in by screw, what is in by nut, right? So uh, generally, mm, uh, the screw as it is de defined as a um cylinder cylinder with a uniform helical ridge protecting from its surface so a nut what does the screw screw is a cylinder with a uniform helical ridge projecting from its surface and nut what does it mean nut so nut is defined as a body which an internal surface made to fit closely the outer surface of the screw so these are all the uh, things, uh, I mean, uh, the definitions of uh, screw and nut. So it is of two forms. Uh, one is the in screw pair, the nut formed a fixed part and the screw on rotating advances in the direction of its axis. Example, screw jack, you know, uh, screw, you know, screw jack. Screw jack is the best example for this. And uh, in other case, the screw forms a turning pair and uh, nut as sliding pair. As a part of uh, this, the nut moves along the axis of the screw. So example, uh, lead screw, lead screw in the um, uh, lathe, right? So. Uh, and it has some uh, um, types, uh, types of threads, uh, right? So according to the shape of the threads, it is uh, uh, square threads, uh, uh, V threads of classification. And according to the surface of the threads, internal threads and external threads are the classifications. According to the number of threads, single threaded and multi-threaded is a uh, 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 classification. Then uh, the last thing is, the direction of movement of threads that is the uh, right handed screw or and left handed screws right so these are all the important classification of uh, uh, the screw threads and uh, the last one is the terminologies uh, terminologies what is the helical or helix it is a curve traced by the particle while moving along a screw thread then pitch pitch is the axial distance uh, from a point on the uh, screw threads to a corresponding point on the next thread. Then lead. Lead means what is a lead? It is a distance uh, screw threaded advances axially in one turn, right? Then uh, the last thing that is uh, um, depth of uh, thread. Dep depth of thread is otherwise called as crest or root of the thread. 
So it is the distance between the top and the bottom surface of the plate. So these are all the important things in the uh, friction uh, in screws and so um, we can uh, see the problems regarding the uh, all uh, friction types in the future videos. Thank you.